Hey, for this video, what I want to do is show you how to factor trinomials of the form x squared plus bx plus c. Basically, this means that the number in front of x squared is 1, and this is by far the easiest form of factoring trinomials. So with this, what you're doing is you're when you're factoring, you're doing the opposite of multiplying. So you're basically trying to figure out what did I multiply together to get this um, trinomial. So when you're factoring trinomials, it will factor down, if it's factorable, into two binomials. So that means that it's two um, terms that both have um, two terms in them. Okay, so for this, once you recognize the pattern, this is a very, very easy process, which you're always going to do when the number in front is x squared. Like if you have a number in front, you have to do something different, and I'll make sure to cover that in another video. Okay, so for this, what you're going to do is you're going to try to find two numbers that multiply together to give you 15 that also add up to be the middle value. So in this case, we have a positive eight. You have to be very careful about watching for the sign, which is why I'm doing four different examples because I wanted to cover all four of the options that you can have with signs. Okay, so for this one, we're looking for two numbers that multiply together to give me 15 that add up to be eight. And so that value is three and five, because if I take three times five, I get 15. And if I take three plus five, I get eight. So now all you have to do is write your answer. So the first number is always going, or the first expression is always going to be x, because x times x is x squared. And then the second expressions are just going to be the values you found over here. So x plus 3 and x plus 5, and then that's your final answer. So we'll go through the next one a little bit faster. Um, you can always check to see does this make sense. And x times x gives me the x squared that I need at the beginning. The 3x in the middle plus the 5x on the outside gives me the 8 in the middle. And the 3 times 5 gives me the 15 at the end. So we know that it works out. Okay, so for the next ones, they all involve some sort of negative. The first one that I did only was a positive. So um, with this one, what we're doing is we're still looking at the last term. This time we're looking for two numbers that multiply together to give me negative 14 that add up to be positive 5. So if you think about all the numbers that multiply together to give you 14, it's like 1 and 14 or 7 and 2. 7 and 2 will work because of the fact that this is negative. So if this one is negative, that means that one of these has to be negative. So the way to tell is look at the sign of the middle number. The sign of the middle number, if it is positive, then the larger value needs to be positive. So the 7 has to be positive and the 2 has to be negative. So 7 times negative 2 gives me negative 14. 7 plus negative 2 gives me 5. So if I write my answer, it would just be x plus 7 and x minus 2. And again, if you want to check, you always can. So you would just do x times x is x squared. This would give me negative 2x plus 7 gives me positive 5. And the 7 times the negative 2 gives me the negative 14 at the end. Okay, for the next one, we're looking for two numbers that multiply together to give me negative 36. So again, that tells us we have to have one positive value and one negative value. Okay, and then we're looking for um, two numbers that multiply together to give us negative 36 that add up to be negative 9. This time, since the negative, the middle number is negative, that tells me that I want my larger factor of 36 um, to add up to be negative 9. So 36 has a lot more factors, okay? So like if you think about factors, you're just thinking about what numbers multiply together to give me 36. So like 1 times 36, 2 times 18, um, 3 times 12, 6 times 6, and 4 times 9, okay? So these are all some factors that multiply together. So if one of them is positive and one of them negative, if I add 1 and negative 36, that would give me negative 35, so that one doesn't work. 2 and negative 18 gives me negative 16, so that one doesn't work. 3 and negative 12 would give me negative 9, so that's the one that works. So sometimes you have a lot more options. The first couple that I did were easy options. There wasn't really a whole lot of things that multiplied together to give me 14. 36 is one of those numbers that quite a few things go into. Okay, so 3 times negative 12 gives me negative 36. 3 plus negative 12 gives me negative 9. So again, I would just go over here and write my answer, x plus 3 
x minus 12. And this would be my final answer. So again, you can always check x times x gives me the x squared at the beginning. The 3 times the negative 12 gives me the negative 36 at the end. And when I do the middle 2 and the outside 2, that gives me the negative 12 plus the 3. Okay, so the last one is the last situation that can happen. For this one, we have a negative in the middle and a positive at the end. So again, we're still doing the same thing. And eventually you get to the point where you don't have to write this. You can just ask it yourself in your head, what numbers multiply together to give me 18 that add up to be negative nine and just write the answer. Um, but when you're learning, it's always good to write this out so that you remember what am I doing? How, what am I trying to do to get this to work out? Okay, so because of the fact that the first one is positive, that tells me that both of these factors have to be negative because a negative times a negative is a positive and a negative plus a negative gives me a negative. Okay, so these are the four scenarios that can happen. They can both be positive. Um, the first one can be positive and the second one negative. They can both be negative or this one could be negative with a positive at the end. Okay, so for this last one, um, the two factors that multiply together to give me 18 that add up to be negative nine would be six and three. And again, if you have to write down all of the factors, that's fine. You know that you could do one and 18 or two and nine or three and six are the factors that go into there. So just think about what can I multiply to get this value right here? And then they have to both multiply together to give you this value and add up to be the middle term. So my answer for this would be x minus six and x minus three. So with this, just to recap, you're always, when there's only a one in front, you're looking at the last number, finding two numbers that multiply together to give you the last term that add up to be the middle term. As always, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please let me know. If there's additional topics you need me to cover, please let me know that as well.